Hi. Good afternoon, Kim. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, you too. And also, well, thank you all for tuning in. Let me just up my volume a little. Yes. Um, so I would like to start with a brief introduction and then start get on with our questions. Yeah. Mm, so I'm introducing today Kim Herford Nielsen, founder and principal of 3XN, one of the largest architectural firms in Denmark. Um, Kim graduated from Aarhus School of Architecture in 1981 and has been a prominent figure in both Danish and international architecture since then. Um, he founded 3XN in 1986. And since the start of the company, he has been the creative driving force behind 3XN. Kim is the architect behind many of Copenhagen's most distinctive buildings, such as the Oostad Gymnasium, the Royal Arena, and the Blue Planet. And internationally, Kim has designed the Sydney Fish Market and Quay Quarter in Sydney, um, International Olympic Committee headquarters in Lausanne, and the Cube in Berlin. So uh, as today's theme, we have the main principles of 3XN and also the connection to GXN. So first, Kim, um, could you briefly describe the philosophy of 3XN and the key principles? On your website, I have found a quote, uh, we believe that architecture shapes behavior. And I was wondering, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, it was actually something that started uh, about 20 years ago when we designed the, the high school in Erzat, where we really realized that what we were designing had a great influences in people's uh, behavior. And the way that we hold, designed the whole school was so the, the students would interact more, communicate more, uh, and learn more from each other. Uh, so since then, it's actually been our motto, uh, architecture shapes behavior. And architecture really shapes behavior when you think about it. You can think about it in a bad way that ghettos shape bad behavior or that good buildings make you feel good. Good areas make you feel good. When you are in, in, in Venice, you feel good because it, it really shapes a, another kind of feeling with you. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good design driver. Right, definitely. Um, and I was wondering, as 3XN has recently completed the design for the International uh, Olympic Committee in Lausanne, um, could you explain how these 3XN's principles were um, translated into this specific design. Yeah, um, it was, well, there's a lot of different stories behind that building. First of all, the client wanted the building to show that the organization was a movement. So we made the whole building as a movement. Uh, but in the core of the building, we, we work with staircases as, as we very often do in our buildings. Here we work with the five rings connecting all the different floors uh, and, um, and, and visual contact from floor to floor. The building is four, fly, four floors high and have a basement underneath, so, so it became five rings. Um, but you have visual contact from one end to the other. And as the president says, uh, from the president from IOC, Thomas Bach says, now it takes him half an hour to walk up to this office. Not because he's walking slow, but, but because he has to talk to so many people on the way. Uh, and you think it's actually really good because then he, he talks with everybody at, at, the, at the office and people knows what is going on is in his organization. So uh, it really makes that the, the building becomes a team organizer, you can say. It makes a, it, ha it has made uh, IOC as a team and that was our aim as well in the design. Interesting, definitely. Um, then my next question, um, as 3XN's main approach is also uh, like human focused design, uh, and maintaining social sustainability in buildings, as you just explained, um, for the Olympic Committee. Um, I was wondering, how do you measure performance of a building, as this s social sustainability is also related to performability of a building? So what are the criteria that show a building performs well for years or maybe centuries? Well, we, we are actually measuring it, uh, uh, literally, because we have people, we have had... Um, architectural psychologists that have been in some of our buildings and been there for months and months and asked, uh, interviewed people and, 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 and looked at how people behave in the building. For example, about the high school I talked about in the beginning. So she was there to see how did people perform? How did they use the staircase? Where did, did they interact? Uh, and so in that way, we could see how it, how it was really functioning in, in reality. 
so we we will go back and see how they how how it functions. But you can say in the long run, uh, it's about you can see this if 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 the if the if a client makes a lot of different changes to the building, uh, that is not coherent with your ideas. There's something wrong in the building. But if they keep and stick to this to the design as they have done uh, now for the last. I don't know, six, 16, 17 years in, in the high school, then there, then there must be something right uh, in, in, in the design that we have made. Of course, there, there should be able to be different kinds of changes uh, during the time, uh, during a lifetime of a building. But if the main idea is still there in the building, then it's really working. Then, then it makes people perform in the right way, I think. Right. Um, I'd also like to follow up on that answer, actually. Um how would the question I just asked be projected on the Sydney uh, fish market design, which is currently under construction? And what were the main strategies in terms of social sustainability there? Yeah, th that's a very exciting uh, building we're doing there. We, it is a fish market, of course, and sort of the last industry on the harbor. But it's also a cultural building, I, as I see it. It's a building where, where people uh, meet, interact, and where you can have different kinds of uh, cultural uh, activities as well. So it's going to be sort of a community center for the whole area. They reckon that about uh, six to eight million people will come there every year. So that's a lot of people. It's, it's, it's really big. It's 82,000 square meters. It's really big. It's two floors. And on the top floor is for the, for, the, for, for normal, normal people. The ground floor is for the professionals. But the top floor where you, where you walk up, a big staircase, you come up, uh, you come up to a, a big area with um, retail and with um, restaurants and all kinds of activities. And by the way, the big staircase that sweeps up, it's a huge staircase. That's also going to be used as a, as a big podium for different kinds of activities as well. Cultural activities, concerts and on the bottom of, of, of the staircase and so on. So I think it's gonna be a massive driver for the whole area. And it's gonna be a destination in Sydney, like the opera uh, is in, in Sydney, but in, a, in another way, of course. Yeah, right. Um, then, I'd like to move on to our second part of the theme. So today's theme is not only about 3XN, but also about GXN. Um, and let's talk about GXN. What does GXN stand for? And what is the relation between 3XN and GXN? 3, 3XN, by the way, stands for three times Nielsen. My name is Nielsen at the end. So we were three Nielsen that started it up. Uh, GXN starts for green, stands for green, as it is um, a unit we started 14 years ago uh, to do green research. In the beginning, it was only in, in materials and, 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 and the technologies. Now it's a lot more. So we do circular design. That's another word for sustainable design. How we can make buildings that could be reused after some years and how we look at everything as not waste, but something that can also, everything can be used again. Uh, of course, we think about the energy in the buildings as well as uh, many other things. We have behavior design as a uh, second thing, and that is uh, what we are. That is actually our main goal: to make buildings that actually makes people behave in a certain way and makes people perform and feel best in the buildings. And as I said, we go back and we evaluate our buildings afterwards to see if they are really working the way that uh, we thought they should be working. And then the third thing is uh, is a digital uh, design. And that has to do with the paramedic design, robot design, and all this higher level of, uh, of, of paramedic and, and digital design that we're doing there. It's all research. So we have about 20 people doing research in our office. And it's all paid for. You might think, how can we afford that? But it's all paid for by, uh, by uh, foundations, by clients, by states, and whatever. So they buy sort of uh, services from GXN, uh, or they buy a research project and, and pay for it. So we actually earn money on the research as it is. So it would be safe to say that 3XN and GXN have the same um, main ideas and principles, but 3XN is more about the design and GXN is more about the technology and the research behind it. Yeah, you can also say that, uh, that uh, GXN is actually testing out everything that we cannot test out in this way uh, as we are doing real buildings. They can test things out in theory and they, they can do they can play in different ways that we cannot play in because it's serious business to to build a building so they are they are playing along and testing everything out and then we can use it afterwards at that 3xn of course we collaborate very closely 
right from the competition of this first sketches, we collabor collaborate very closely with GXN in, in our buildings and, and all the knowledge that we get from GXN we use in, in our, our buildings. And then the GXN comes back to when the buildings are there and again test our, the buildings to get more knowledge into GXN that we can use the 3XN again. So it's sort of a circle of work. Yeah, of that's sharing. It's yeah. One collaboration of, uh, yeah, between yeah. companies. Um, then I'd like to um, start discussing the cube in Berlin that you recently designed. So it was recently completed, actually. Um, and that office space is designed in a flexible and modular way. Uh, which could be seen as very a very important feature in uh, the post-COVID era. And I was wondering, how does 3XN uh, respond to the current pandemic? Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. Uh, I think everything we do now, all the clients that we're working for now have these questions in all, all our design. And actually, the Cube is a good example because it has a big brain sort of in, in the center of the building where it uh, where you have on your iPhone, you have all your information and it goes into the brain. So the building knows where you are uh, and it adjusts to you. So you have your, your special features. You want this and this and this uh, in light and air and whatever. Uh, and if you are going to a meeting, the, the building tells you where there's a meeting room you can go to and so on. But at the same time, we can actually separate people as well. So we can fill up the, uh, the building in, 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 in the right way. So people are not getting too close uh, in the building. So in a pandemic way, it's actually ideal with this sort of brain building as well. Right. And how would you see uh, the future of office buildings? I think, has, uh, well, we have been through this pandemic, so everybody has to, uh, been in, in, a, in a period and some are still in a period where they work uh, remote. Uh, and I think in the future, even when this pan pandemic is over, people, some people will still be working remote for some days and some will be at the office. But I think uh, future buildings, office buildings will probably be as big as they were before, but people will sit more uh, apart and there'll be a bigger diversity of spaces in, in the buildings. We need that both for to be creative and to think better and perform better, but also to prevent that we go into uh, new pandemics in the future. So I think uh, we, we, we will have the same sizes of buildings, but we we'll just use it more extravagant in, in, in how we made the layout uh, of the building. That's very, yeah, indeed, uh, very interesting. And um, then I have a follow-up question, actually. So now we've really answered the COVID, uh, the current pandemic question in how um, other companies or how the office building should be designed. And I was also wondering, how did 3XN as an office um, adapt to the current pandemic? Where uh, Were there any transformations in terms of studio space or workflow? Well, um, Denmark is a little bit different from many other countries right now uh, also, because uh, it hasn't been so hard on us as it is, for example, in France and, and England. But still, uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, everybody more or less was uh, thrown at home. I was not, I was here with a little team doing competitions. But uh, most of our staff were actually uh, for a period working from home. Uh, but slowly we moved back into the office uh, again and, uh, and now we are back in the office. Uh, it is so that uh, the tables are fairly big for every, every uh, uh, man, every man, woman in, in the office. So we are sitting uh, a meter apart uh, as we should according to the rules. Uh, and then we try to, um, then we have changed uh, our, our lunch. We, we, we serve lunch for our staff. Before we had a big buffet, we cannot have a buffet in these times here. So we have small, small portions for everybody. And then we ask our staff not to sit too close. If they do it, I don't know. But anyway, that was, that was, uh, that, that, that's the idea. Uh, luckily, we haven't had any incidents in the office uh, until now. I'm not going to here. And I don't hope that will come. We've had one outside the office, uh, one that was infected outside the office, but not at the office. So, so that's good. Yeah. Um, then back to Cube design. Um, the Cube is a smart building that will, as you said, an app uh, which will help connect people and drive sustainable behavior and make their working day more efficient. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the relation between the cube design and technology? 
Yeah, I actually talked a little bit about it that uh, we have this brain in the center and then of course there's a lot of different places inside the building. Uh, so when you step into the building right away, you get uh, with your phone, you get you you have your uh, what do you call it your your key uh, on your phone. So when you get in uh, through the security, it tell, then the uh, building register register uh, you and you uh, are told where to go, uh, and, um, and 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 that way we can we, they, the the clients in there. It's a you know it's a, it's not one company is in there. There's a lot of different uh, companies in there. So, but uh, the, the different companies, they, they can work with it in, in, in many different ways. And we haven't done the interior of all the different uh, companies inside the building, but we've just made the whole system. So it works to, perfect uh, together. Uh, in the building, there's a, a little terrace on every floor, but moving around on the facades. So there's a, mm -hmm. there's a little place where you can get outside uh, of the building, which I think is very uh, important as well, especially for smokers. So uh, they can go out there and without going out of the whole uh, of the whole building, and you can go out there just to get some fresh air as well. Uh, and at, at, at the at the top of the building, uh, there's a big common uh, terrace uh, for the for the uh, people in the building and actually for outsiders as well. We can come up and have the view over the uh, rice tark and everything uh, from up there, and the Bundestag. Uh, and uh, of of Berlin as, as 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 such. Right, and um, you explained before that GXN is more the technical side of the company. To what extent were they involved in the development of this app and these techn technological uh, features in the building? GXN has not been that involved in it. We actually worked together with Aachen uh, University mm -hmm. uh, for this, and uh, GXN and and. and has had a little role in it, but uh, mostly it has actually been the uh, Aachen University that has developed the technology together with the, with us and our clients with, with the building. Um, great. Um, then I have one more question, and then we have two more questions that we have from the followers. Um, so my personal last question uh, would be, with the use of advanced uh, technology, materials, new material production from waste, of course, climate change. Uh, circular thinking is at the heart of our design process. In this sense, what is your understanding of circular design and circular thinking? Uh, yeah, touch based on it a little bit here before. When we, when we design a building, we design it so it can de be dismantled uh, in the future. This is very good if you're doing, for example, uh, timber buildings. Everything is sort of prefabricated. You put it together and you can dismantle it again and use it elsewhere. But also with concrete buildings or whatever kind of material we're using, we think about how can we reuse the different elements so we don't have to, uh, to throw it away and it just becomes waste. We can actually use it again for another building. I think that's, that's very important with all the materials, everything we have in the, the building. We make a, a material passport in the building so all the different uh, elements in the building has a little chip in it, uh, and then 50 years time you can measure. You can go into the chip and see where come where this comes from and uh, what it can perform and whatever this material, and then you can reuse it in the future. Uh, this is uh, this is a circular building, and it becomes circular economy as well, because uh, uh, today or it has been until now, a building has been more uh, economical problem if you have to demolish it. Now you can actually uh, earn money on it when, when you're moving away from it because you can reuse it again. So in that way, there's a, there's a win-win situation in, in, in how to work with it. Um, and then I would like to conclude the session with a final question. So this question is actually from uh, the followers, um, the people who are yeah. tuning in. Um, we had a poll where people could submit their questions and we'd ask them to you. Um, and it's more of a question to you personally instead of uh, to 3XN as a company. Uh, people were wondering what made, you, what made you choose architecture as an education and how was your first year as an architect? Uh -huh. Yeah, actually when I left high school, I, I didn't choose uh, architecture right away. I didn't actually know what to be. Uh, I was thinking about a pilot, which is far from this. But anyway, I went to New Zealand as far away as I could come from my home. Uh, it was just on the other side of the, the earth. Right. 
Uh, and there I met some guy, guys that uh, started an architect school down there on Palmerston, in Palmerston North. And that inspired me. So I went back and started the architect school uh, in, in Aarhus, as you said. Uh, so and that was actually how I came into it. And then, then I realized that it had, had actually always been my interest to design. Uh, and I was so enthusiastic about it. My first, first year as an architect uh, was full of curiosity. And I think that's, that's the most important thing you, 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 you have to have as an architect. If you want to be something, you, you have to be curious. And I'm still very curious. And uh, I think that's the main driver for, for being something as an, as an architect. You, you should never be satisfied in what you're doing. You should always go for something better, something more exciting, uh, more exciting design, and go out and, and see the world as well, uh, what has been done. Uh, to uh, inspire you as well. Right. Um, thank you so much for the last inspirational words. Um, and then I would like to thank everyone who tuned to this conversation today uh, and for submitting all your questions. And of course, I would also like to series. And, and thank you. Yeah. And uh, have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.